Good morning, everybody. Or, sorry. Good afternoon. It is uh, 2 o'clock, and uh, it's time for Tea Time with me, Captain Awesome. Uh, I have my uh, tea ready to go right here. The uh, California Academy of Sciences in Golden Gate Park. Fantastic aquarium that they have there. Been there a few times. Uh, while I'm not normally a, a big fan of uh, aquariums and things like that, uh, sometimes they do serve a purpose. For instance, in some zoos, that's the only way they keep some species in existence is by breeding them in um, zoos. So <clears throat> anyhow, uh, I'm glad you're with me. It's Friday. Uh, it's probably been a tough week for some of you. I'm glad you made it here. I hope you have a good weekend. Um, and before we even start, I'll let you know that I do plan on being back here on Monday. Depending on the weather, we'll either be outside uh, doing a hike, which I'll be much better prepared for, or maybe we're going to talk about one of my personal heroes, a gentleman named E.O. Wilson, who is an amazing uh, naturalist and scientist who had more of, of an effect on your life than you probably um, even know. Now, I'm going to try to look at you while I'm doing this, but I'm, I'm very, very new at this. And so I'm also watching the screen and looking for questions. So please understand, I'm not trying to ignore you. I'm super glad that you're here. I'm super happy um, that you're joining me during this. And um, with that, let, let, without further ado, let's uh, get talking about jellyfish, uh, which are neither made of jelly, nor are they fish. Okay? So, show you a couple of videos uh, that I took of these really um, amazing creatures. The first is, turn the sound off, the first are some moon jellies. Now, if you see um, video like this or pictures like this, this is always in an aquarium where they have optimized the lighting but I love these moon jellies. They're so um, gentle and undulating. And then next we have a uh, sea nettle. Uh, a sea nettle which has long tentacles. This is a jellyfish that can sting you. Technically, all jellyfish can sting you, and we'll talk about how. Just some are more um, dangerous than others. And they all swim with that kind of bell-shaped motion. This is an interesting jellyfish. It glows in the dark. Um, I thought this was a fascinating looking creature. Um, again, same basic shape of a jellyfish. And finally, we've got another view of the sea nettle. Again, perfect lighting. Look at that undulating bell and those big tentacles. And that's an excellent look at exactly uh, the way that a jellyfish in general um, will look. And on we go to, first we're going to talk about the anatomy and the life cycle of a jellyfish, because jellyfish are really very um, interesting. So uh, a couple of plates I have in here, these um, colorful diagrams. This is uh, by a gentleman named Ernst Heckel. I, I would highly recommend that you folks look him up. And he was a artist and taxonomist who identified and drew hundreds and thousands of animals, not just not just sea creatures, but land creatures as well. And they have these color plates, which are absolutely fantastic. I've got a couple of ties that are uh, plankton that Haeckel drew, um, and I would highly recommend that you check those out. But first, general anatomy of a true jellyfish. Pretty straightforward. It's this bell-shaped organ, um, organ. It has this, uh, in the middle, you can see that its mouth is also its anus. It only has one opening. It ingests into that opening and excretes out of that opening. Then it has the bell. Then it has the, the bell, which is also called the mesoglia. That's the thing that you usually see is the mesoglia. And then they've got the tentacles that hang down. Pretty straightforward. <clears throat> the part of the jellyfish that makes people nervous of course, is the stinging cells. We've all heard about jellyfish and how they can sting and how they can be dangerous. And I'll tell you a personal story in a little while 
Um, but I was, in fact, stung by a jellyfish at one point in time, and it was not a pleasant experience. And those little organs that sting you are called nematocysts, and they are in, there are little cell that are in the tentacles. Some of them, some jellyfish have tentacles that are much longer and thus have more nematocysts, and they're very, very, depending on the jellyfish, very strong venom. So nematocysts or nidoblasts, okay? So if you look at the top picture, you'll see this is one that has not been discharged. It's a cell, and there's a little capsule in there that um, is, picture it like a glove, a finger in a glove that's poked in, and then they have that hair trigger, and that trigger um, ignites the cell. And then if you blow, the, the, the glove inverts, right? So that's like the finger of a glove poking out, and that thread jams into your skin, and those little barbs um, stick to you. Um, if you've ever experienced a sea anemone, which are not very dangerous, um, sometimes you can touch them, and you'll feel that they'll stick to you. That is actually hundreds of nematocysts that have stuck into your um, skin. And I have a pretty good example of how that mechanism works. A gift that I downloaded. So there you go, boom. See, it pops right out and um, sticks that thread into you and injects the venom, which is in a pouch. It all happens very, very quickly. And then we're going to go on to the life cycle of the uh, jellyfish. Very interesting creatures. Here's the general diagram. So there's two adult jellyfish. They don't mate like we normally uh, think of mating. What happens is the female releases eggs into the water, and the male releases sperm into the water. And the eggs get fertilized, and they create this little um, planular larva with these little hairs. And the larva goes down to the bottom and sticks to something. Now, sometimes uh, they, they tend to breed all at once and release all the eggs at once. So sometimes if you're in a, in a, in a um, marina or in a place where they've all bred, there'll be huge colonies of what they call the polyp phase, just that part that has a little sticky part to it with the tentacles on top and the discs. Each one of those discs become a bud. So one egg can become multiple um, jellyfish. Each bud then breaks off and becomes an ephira larva, which is that star-shaped larva that's free swimming, which eventually grows into an adult. Their entire life cycle takes about a year. Most jellyfish die after a year, though we are finding that, in fact, some jellyfish can live forever. We'll talk about that later. Okay, here's an example of the ephira larva um, that would be swimming around. Um, I have gotten a couple of these in my plankton samples, but I was not able to find actual pictures that I've taken. Um, so I kind of stole these from the internet. My apologies um, to whoever took it, but this is from the science photo library, and it's a really good um, picture. You can see that it has all the... Um, things that make it a jellyfish. It has that central di uh, mesoglia, it has the tentacles, um, that little spot in the middle are actually its gonads or uh, reproductive organs. And then here's an example of a couple of different um, species. So you can see the uh, orange on the bottom left is a, the, um, the discs, and then in the middle is the buds, and then on the right behind me are the um, uh, free-floating parts and how they grow a little bit. Uh, they're an amazing uh, little creature and it's an amazing way um, to reproduce. And that, it's a simple animal. It's an ancient animal. It's been around about, we talked about horseshoe crabs the other day, and horseshoe crabs um, are about 350 to 450 million years old. Jellyfish were around about 50 million years even before horseshoe crabs. So they are an early primitive animal, it's difficult to figure that out because you can imagine they don't have any real hard parts that fossilize well. So it's exceedingly rare to find a um, jellyfish uh, fossil. 
So next we're going to talk about the different types of jellyfish. We're going to talk about three main types. There's about 13 major groups of jellyfish, but we, you and I, uh, if we're talking about Cape Cod or at the beach, we tend to see three different types. We see tinophores, cnidarians, and rarely siphonophores. So the first one we're going to talk about are tinophores, because these are really, really cool um, little jellyfish, otherwise known as, hold on, comb jellies, right? So some of you may have seen these around. Sometimes when I do a plankton tow, I will get a ton of them in my net because they come in at a certain time to eat as much plankton as they can. Here's a video I took at the um, Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. Highly recommend you go if you get a chance. You can see those undulating patterns on the side um, that move up and down. They're not sure what that pattern does. They certainly don't have any eyes. Hold on. I missed one there. My apologies. Here's a better look at another one. They're iridescent. That little kind of brown and white speck in the middle, those are literally um, the gonads around the digestive tract. A jelly is about 95% water. That's pretty uh, pretty incredible. And then the anatomy of a, a comb jelly is a little bit different than others. Oh, sorry. I am not good at this. The anatomy of a comb jelly is a little different than other jellyfish in that it's more of a bulbous shape uh, and it has a mouth on one end and an anal pore on the other. So literally they take food in one end, digest it, and stick it right out the other end. Now the combs that we have around here, we don't generally see these lateral filaments and the long tentacles. Um, we tend to see them short or, or lobed, uh, but we do have a tiny little comb jelly called a sea gooseberry that does have really long tentacles and that's really uh, fantastic. All right, those are tinophores. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna skip through, hold on. I messed up this, the order, I'm sorry. All right, now to cnidarians, which are the jellyfish that most of us are kind of familiar with. If you're from Cape Cod, you've seen kind of a boost in lion's mane jellies uh, a little bit recently. And while people tend to think that's maybe because the water is warmer, these are a jellyfish that like to be in cold water. We also see sea nettles and cannonball jellyfish. Uh, this is the classic shape of a jellyfish, okay? Um, these are sea nettles from, I think I showed you this video already, and again, this was at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. They have an excellent jellyfish display there. Also at the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium, if you're ever out there, that's one of my favorite spots. Uh, this is another example of a type of sea nettle whose tentacles aren't quite so long. You can see they have this coloration on top. We're not sure what the coloration is for. Um, because uh, they can't see, um, and they're mostly transparent. Uh, when we find comb jellies in the water column, sometimes we can't even um, see them. And then this is another example of a lion's mane jellyfish, a small one. Again, this was taken. Well, this one was taken at the New England Aquarium, so I was able to get a pretty good shot. And this is how big a lion's mane jelly can get. As a matter of fact, this isn't even how big a lion's mane jelly can get. A lion's mane jelly is the largest known jellyfish uh, on the planet, and they can get really, really huge. We'll talk about just how huge in a minute. Um, the other thing that's interesting about jellyfish is while they can swim, they are mostly carried around by currents. Um, the current is stronger than they are, so it makes for a very strong argument that jellyfish are actually a form of plankton. A, a megaplankton, a large type of um, plankton. And lastly, the one that we are all scared of, a siphonophore, right? So this is, uh, again, a heckle print of all these different kinds of siphonophores, but we're familiar with one uh, for the most part. Uh, siphonophores is a what we consider a jelly, but it's actually 
a colonial animal. It's a whole bunch of different species of animals, zoids and polyps, that are all living together for a purpose, to capture food and to share uh, the nutrition that comes from that food. It's almost like an extreme form of symbiosis. The one that we're all familiar with, of course, is the um, Portuguese man of war. This is the sale of a Portuguese man of war that came into Woods Hole a few years ago. And later on, we had a bigger Portuguese man of war that came in. So there's kind of three parts of the man of war. There's the, the, the sail and then the tentacles. The tentacles are uh, fascinating. I'm going to show you a video of a Portuguese man of war that we were able to collect and they kept at the Marine Resource Center in Woods Hole for a couple of days. All these different tentacles, if they look different, they're a different animal altogether, even though they're all living together under the same umbrella, so to speak. That long tentacle is one, the spirally is a different animal, the white bushy one is a different animal. Um, it's absolutely amazing. It was mesmerizing uh, to watch this creature move and undulate in the, um, in the water. Uh, we're going to talk a, in a little more in-depth about uh, Portuguese Man of War in just a minute. Absolutely fascinating creature. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get over it. So those are the three main types that, that we're going to talk about. So now we have these local species. So the first is one that we have all probably commonly seen, which is a moon jelly. Now, I grew up on Cape Cod. Uh, when I was a kid, I lived over in Yarmouth off of uh, West Great Western Road. And I used to go down to the railroad bridge that crosses Bass River by Route 6 and jump off into the river. And sometimes we would jump in and the water would feel slimy almost because there were so many moon jellies, millions and millions of moon jellies. There are some sites that you go to that'll tell you that the moon jelly is one of the most dangerous jellies out there. Emphatically not. They do have nematocysts and they do have tentacles, but they're not a dangerous jelly, mostly because the nematocysts are very light and can't even pierce your skin. Moon jellies are ubiquitous. That means that they are found all over uh, the world in many different types of waters. Um, so we're going to a couple of close-up pictures. You could tell it's a moon jelly because of that four-leaf clover shape that's in the middle. That is actually its reproductive organs or gonads. That's where either sperm is created or eggs are created. And notice that they're just about the biggest organs that are visible in the moon jelly. Another picture with the filamentous uh, tentacles and the canals that move the food up into the mouth. So what happens is the tentacles sting the plankton, because this is what jellyfish are generally eating, the moon jellyfish are eating plankton. And then they move into those little canals and move it into its mouth where it um, ejects it. Another great picture, I think this is from National Geographic, a uh, good look at the, at the gonads of the animal and the tentacles, and then a gif of when they gather in great numbers. That's a lion's mane mixed in with them, um, but those are moon jellies in a large um, gathering. So that is one of the more common local jellyfish. We find them very small, uh, up to, you know, pretty decent size, and they wash up on the beach, but they are not dangerous. You have no reason to be afraid of those. Then the second kind is the lion's mane, which is dangerous. Another personal story about the lion's mane jellyfish. I used to work for an organization called Ocean Quest. It no longer exists, but it was a fantastic nonprofit based out of Woods Hole. And because it was a nonprofit, we were always broke. So one day, uh, a rope got kind of around the propeller of the ship. And like a pirate, I put a knife in my mouth and jumped under with a mask and, and cut the rope off of the propeller and uh, swam back up to the ladder that was on the pier. And when I came up out of the water, 
I had a lion's mane jellyfish draped across my shoulder. Now we're going back almost 20 years ago. I was a much younger man, much more hale and hearty. And um, I said, I'm fine, I'm fine. We pulled it off and I could feel the tentacles sticking because of all those nematocysts that had fired into my skin. We pulled it off, didn't think anything of it. Of course, somebody made a joke about lay down and we'll pee on you because that's the joke that uh, everybody... Oh, Jamie, that's excellent. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I'm sad that it's uh, no longer around. But I'm trying to fill that void for Ocean Quest. So, lots of jokes about people who wanted to pee on me. That actually doesn't help. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, too. Um, and within 15 or 20 minutes, uh, I became so nauseous and dizzy that I had to lay down. Uh, they didn't trust me to drive home, so I had to just kind of take the afternoon off and let it wear off. And I got some pretty good welts. So this is a small animal, and the lion's mane isn't even among kind of the most venomous. It's maybe in the top 15 or so, um, but it definitely threw me for a loop. So here's a, uh, a video of how big a lion's mane can get. Yes, that is an actual size of how big a lion's mane jellyfish can get. Okay, the bell can be as much as 10 feet across and the tentacles as much as a hundred, okay, a hundred feet long. It is the largest jellyfish that we know in existence. They get that big in the northern frigid Arctic waters where things are slow and there aren't a lot of predators. At that size, almost nothing eats it and its tentacles are just basically a trawling net. Anything that gets caught in it uh, gets stung and paralyzed, uh, moved up to its mouth, and uh, consumed. It is, uh, it's an amazing animal. When people see pictures of divers next to them, they think that they're photoshopped. They think that's a fake picture, but it is not. That is the size of that jellyfish, and that's not even the biggest that they come. It's absolutely astounding. Um, this is more typical of the lion's mane jellyfish we're going to see in the waters around the Cape. The bell will be about, oh, six to eight inches across, some tentacles underneath, mass of tentacles. Uh, they can sting. They're, they're red. They're very colorful. We've been finding a lot that are like an inch or two in diameter off of Chatham when we do hikes, um, down in Chatham. And then this is even one of the smaller ones with the filamentous. When they're big and they get in close, the, the tentacles actually get um, kind of broken off in the sand. And every once in a while, you'll find them washed up on the beach. Uh, that kind of red pattern on the top is a giveaway. You should not, you can touch the top if you're careful, but you should not turn it over and handle it. Uh, the, the nematocyst can still sting even when... Uh, the animal has washed up on the beach and is clearly dead. So we don't want to do that. And then the last of the local jellyfish that are becoming, uh, that are that are lots and lots of them around, are uh, comb jellies. Uh, again, this is another species of, of jellyfish that will absolutely inundate an area when its food supply becomes uh, plentiful. Now, I am not sure if they migrate in or if they reproduce when the food is plentiful. I don't know how long it takes for a comb jelly to reach maturity. It could be either one. Uh, again, love the iridescence of them. They are an absolutely um, beautiful creature. They remind me, I don't know if, if any of you read science fiction. Uh, one of my favorite authors is a guy named uh, Ian M. Banks wrote these culture novels, and th these remind me of something that would be a ship that you would find in the culture novels. Again, mostly water, lovely iridescence, the cilia that move, uh, beautiful, beautiful creatures, mostly transparent. Oftentimes, we will do a seine net or a plankton tow, and we'll catch them. We won't even know they're there until we put the deposit into a jar and look up at, at the water and we don't see the jellyfish. We see the, the, we see the combs of the jellyfish. 
Um, they're really, really um, amazing. You don't, you don't even know they're there. Uh, you can't see them, but you might collect tons. Sometimes I'm doing a plankton tow. I'll tow the net for like five minutes in the canal. And when I pull it up, sometimes it's just full of comb jellies. And I didn't even know they were there because you can't see them in the water. This is what they look like when you find them on a beach. Just a little clear jewel of a gel, jelly, um, not not harmful at all. Completely not harmful at all. And lastly, this video again. I just love the iridescence and the color. This was taken at the Aquarium of the Pacific. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful place and, and beautiful jellies. All right, and last one. This is sea gooseberry. See, it's rounder, so has a mouth, and it has those really long tentacles. Again, uh, you will probably never see these in the water. You should seek them out in aquariums. Sometimes they have them in the aquariums, uh, well lit. All right, and now we're going to get to the dangerous jellyfish, the ones that everybody is uh, worried about. I've taken the mo three most dangerous jellyfish and we're going to talk about them each in order the first is the portuguese man of war we're all familiar with this we've all heard about this right uh first off is the fact that oh hold on i'm going to move my picture a little bit so you can read the words um the first is that its latin name is phasalia uh, facilis interesting name it's named after an 18th century warship because of that large sail that's above the water. Again, this is a siphonophore. This is a colonial animal. There's a bunch of different tent a bunch of different animals that live with it. And it has what's called a cardiotoxin. That means that this animal can potentially kill you by giving you a heart attack if you're very sensitive to that kind of toxin. Um, mostly oh, sorry. Interesting thing about those fish that you are seeing in the bottom there. Those aren't actually being eaten by the jelly. Those are Portuguese man-of-war fish that symbiotically live with the jelly. Um, I've seen them out in the Gulf Stream in the tentacles of the jelly. It's pretty amazing. Oh, hold on. All right, still learning this new presentation. This is the mark of a Portuguese man of war um, stinging you, not good. Again, this is after a couple of days of healing. Um, you will be scarred. It's a story to tell for a long time. Uh, incidentally, for those who are watching, if something is ever to happen to me and I should perish, say I you know, slip and fall down the stairs or something, the instructions are that my obituary is to say that I was killed by uh, a, attacking bear in a national park. No matter what happens, no matter how stupidly I perish, I need, my obituary has to say that I was killed by a bear in a national park. Thank you. Um, the Irukandji jellyfish, okay? Uh, this is one that is found, uh, there's 16 species of this jellyfish. They're all types of box jellyfish. They're found in northern Australia. They have stingers on tentacles and bell. They're one of the only ones that have stingers on the bell as well. So when you get stung by these guys, you get this uh, thing called Irukandji syndrome. It involves any of or all of the following symptoms. Cramps, severe back and severe pain in the back and kidneys, burning on your skin and face, headache, nausea, restlessness, sweating, vomiting, increase in heart rate, and a sense of impending doom. With all that other stuff going on, of course you're going to have a sense of impending doom. It's horrible, horrible stuff. And this jellyfish, as you can see, is barely bigger than a match head. Long tentacles, barely bigger than a match head, but the tentacles can be up to three feet long with millions of nematocysts in each one with an incredible, incredibly toxic um, poison. Look at that. Next to a match head. That thing could potentially kill you. Who to thunk? Look. 
two dollars i don't know where that's two dollars i imagine australia um but probably not worth much it's kind of a small coin but look that thing could absolutely potentially kill you and it's so so small absolutely amazing and this is a sting uh from one of those guys uh definitely uh painful welty uh it'll probably scar as well over time Yes, the, the fish aren't immune to the sting of the Portuguese Man of War. They just don't get stung. They literally live in the tentacles of the uh, Man of War. He should know that. I mean, he's a science expert, right? Isn't he a science animal expert? Woohoo. Um, lastly, we have the, one of the most deadly animals on the planet, the sea wasp. Okay? It's a box jellyfish. Yeah, native to Australia and Southeast Asia. It's absolutely one of the deadliest creatures on Earth. One jelly has enough venom to kill 60 adult humans. They cause at least 101 deaths a year since they started tracking who died of it in 1954. Over 5,000 people um, have died uh, because of a box jellyfish. People describe the sting of a jaw, uh, box jellyfish as like being branded with a hot iron. Uh, the shock of, the, of this pain uh, can cause you to have a heart attack or disorient you and cause you to drown. It is a deadly, deadly, deadly animal. Uh, beautiful, nonetheless. You know, look at that. The bell, the tentacles, absolutely a beautiful creature. And yeah, this is what it did to a woman's leg. This is what it looked like the day after she got stung. So uh, real quickly, lastly, we're going to have some kind of weird facts about jellyfish. Number one, don't pee on a sting. Somehow this became a thing, okay? So the nematocyst is a cell. And just like any cell, it reacts to osmosis. The jellyfish is a saltwater creature. Your pee is fresh water. So when you pee on the cell, it can cause an osmotic reaction, which will make the cell in, uh, fire. So cells that haven't fired will. If you're going to be at a beach um, that is going to potentially have jellyfish that you might be worried about, you, could take, you should take with you a spray bottle or a squirt bottle of, of vinegar, of acidic vinegar, uh, the vinegar will help counteract the venom and uh, cause them um, to release, actually. So you should bring vinegar, not pee. Okay? Jellyfish don't have any brains. Uh, they have what's called a neural net. So their whole body reacts to stimulus on the outside. They know how to move food into their body. They know when to um, uh, lay eggs and when to release sperm, but they don't have a brain, uh, a central nervous system. We talked about an animal last week that also doesn't have a brain, and that's a sea star. Some jellyfish are edible. Um, most of them, if you were going to see them and they were going to be edible, uh, they're going to be pickled or salted or dried. Um, it, in Asia, when I was in Singapore, I actually had crispy fried jellyfish. Uh, it tasted exactly like what you think something made of 95% water would taste like, which was the soy sauce that I dipped it in. Uh, jellyfish can clone themselves. If you took a jellyfish and you cut it in half, both halves could grow into a new jellyfish that are completely identical, okay? Completely identical. Um, so that's kind of an interesting. I'm not sure how many pieces you could cut a jellyfish into and they would grow. I would imagine you have to have part of that central disc in it, right? Jellyfish either live for a year or forever, okay? So jellyfish, their lifespan is about a year, but they found a couple of jellyfish that when they die, they settle to the bottom, and then in, and then the polyp phase, the part of that has the little buds and the rings, grows out of the jellyfish in exact clones of that jellyfish. It is the same jellyfish mature and start swimming we don't know how many times that can happen uh, in a lab they've done it hundreds of times so literally there are jellyfish out there that could be um, immortal and that's it 
uh, for my jellyfish um, for my jellyfish presentation today. I'm glad that you joined me. I'm glad you got through another week. Uh, be nice to each other. Be kind. Uh, next week's going to be tough too, but I'll be back with you on Monday, either outside if the weather is nice or talking about E.O. Wilson. So you guys have a great weekend. And uh, I'm Jeff, Captain Awesome. Check us out, Cape Cod Learning Tours, on Facebook or Instagram at Cape Cod Explorer. Have a great day. Good weekend.